Today we're doing Murph. It's a CrossFit hero workout. It's an excellent workout. It's a one mile run followed by 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats with a one mile run as a finisher. I'm gonna use a 20 pound vest and I'm gonna make it interesting today. I'm gonna put $20 out there and see if anybody can beat me. CrossFit Murph coming at you right after this. So today's the day that we're going to do CrossFit workout. It's called Murph. CrossFit honors heroes that were killed in battle by naming a workout after them and calling that workout that name forever. And this one is called Murph. And Murph is a special workout because if you have read this book called Lone Survivor by Marcus Luttrell, you've read about Lieutenant Michael Murphy who was killed in Afghanistan in 2005. Lone Survivor is probably my favorite book that I've ever read. I strongly suggest it. And you'll see the bravery and heroism that came from Lieutenant Michael Murphy that is absolutely deserving of having a workout, having a battleship, having everything named after him. He's one of the bravest people we've ever had, one of the bravest people I've ever read about. It's an incredible story. Please read it. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, I overslept yesterday. I was so paranoid <laughs> this morning. I didn't sleep well at all last night. You know, that was an excuse why one person decided to tell me that they couldn't come back to the workout anymore. They said, I get excited about it, and it's kind of like having a plane to catch, and I never sleep well the night before, so I can't come anymore. <laughs> I said, okay, well, it's the first time I've done that. Jets? <sighs> with the early birds, it's nice. Today is gonna to be uh, the first day for many people that to do Murph. And the funny thing is, is, this is one of the harder ones that we do here, but it just happens that this falls on a day when it's a lot of people's first time. When I ask around the workout, they say this is the first workout they ever did at the RRL. And you know what, that is a testament to their dedication because after doing this workout, it could easily be your last day at the RRL. Who's that? Who's Murph. Murph. I've never done Murph before. What? Dude. I've never done Murph before. Are you Smart. kidding? <laughs> no. No. I've missed, I've missed you know the what? fun every time. This has been uh, many people's first and few people's last day. <laughs> I was going to make this a little interesting today because as we've talked about many times before, intensity gets results. So I figured what better way to, to uh, increase the intensity around here for myself, I can do that by simply putting on a 20 pound weighted vest and that's what I chose to do today. I strap on the 20 pound weighted vest, but how am I going to increase the intensity of my group? Or do I actually put something out there, dangle a little carrot out in front of them? and there's no carrot that's better than money. So I bring a $20 bill down, I put it right on the, on the board that shows the workout, and I say the first one back gets this $20 bill. So today, we're gonna do the famous Murph workout. Everybody's really excited about it. Make things a little more interesting, I'll put 20 bucks out there. 
to see if any first person that gets back can win the 20 bucks and uh and i'm gonna do it with a weighted vest <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is keep track of it it's gonna be a lot of rounds and on this one sometimes you have to do it where you have to do all 100 pull-ups before you move on to the 200 push-ups then do those before you move on to the 300 squats on this one, we're just going to get the work done. You get 100 pull-ups done, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, you're good. Run a mile on both sides of it, that's fine today. So I'm probably going to break it into sets of 5, 10, and 15 and do 20 sets of that. I've got some chalk on the ground. I'm going to mark those because there's no way I'm going to be able to count to 20 sets uh, when, I'm, when I'm that tired. Uh, but I think everybody's excited about it. It'll be fun. It's the first time we've ever done it on this hill. We have an incredibly steep hill right behind my new house here, and uh, it's going to add some time. Last time with the vest, I did it in 41 minutes, so today we'll hopefully I'll bring it in a little, little faster than that. Because as you put on 20 pounds of resistance, man, does it slow you down. After wearing that 20 pound weighted vest, I was determined that if I had 20 pounds to lose, I would lose it. My uh, actually, my son was in the hospital for about two weeks this summer, and I did Murph almost every day and uh, it kept me uh, mentally sane which is uh, a good thing so uh, this this workout can get you through hard times as well as enjoy the, the fun times but uh, you got to keep exercising and keep keep moving during difficult times and I don't know that I would have done that last year if I hadn't been doing doing the RRL before that so I did Murph every morning knowing these guys were at Tom's house busting their butt and uh, it was good I was almost had a tear. Did you have a tear? It, you can joke about it now. Actually, it was not not fun at the time. <laughs> All right, you ready? Stop. Sit. Hey, sit. Sit. In. Sit. So now we finished the warm up. We're ready to get into the workout, and today's workout is a very very tough one. One mile run, 100 pull ups. 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and run another mile. Are you ready now? I'm gonna take off kind of slow because uh, I'm gonna pace this workout just a little bit. But there's gonna be a mad dash when this clock goes off. These guys are ready to win that 20 bucks. I definitely noticed a difference with Progenix. The biggest things I noticed was one, I wasn't quite as sore the next day, and I just felt more fresh for the next workout. And it just makes your workout, your next workout more productive because you're not just running through mud, but uh, actually doing what your body can do. I'm Chris Spieler, and I am Progenix. Like Fitness Truth on Facebook to see our daily workouts, great articles, and photos. Post your own scores and chart your progress so that we can cheer you on as you reach your goals. It's not just another Facebook page, it's a lifestyle. But there's gonna be a mad dash when this clock goes off. These guys are ready to win that 20 bucks. Push up to you, do it. 
I was pregnant. I get back to the RRL only to see chalk marks on the ground that Jimmy, Allen, Patrick, and Will had already finished one or two rounds ahead of me. So I know I have a tremendous amount of time to make up and I better do it quickly. Oh, I'm catching up. But as soon as I grab that pull up bar with the 20 pound vest, I know that I'm in for a very, very tough workout. <laughs> to continue to improve your strength and conditioning, you need to throw as many different things into the mix as you possibly can. Now, the one tool that absolutely has infinite possibilities is the barbell. Now, the barbell is one of the oldest strength and conditioning tools. You've seen it. Um, Olympic athletes, every type of athlete out there has at one point used a barbell. Well, at not too long ago, the, the fitness industry kind of got away from the barbell and you stopped seeing free weights in, in gyms. It was all machines. And I just don't feel that that is good. I like the barbell. I don't think that there's a better tool out there for conditioning and definitely for strength than the barbell or what you might call free weights. Now here at the RL, we use a couple of different types of weights. We use the metal weights, the traditional metal weights, but then more frequently we use the rubber weights. The, the weights that are not just coated with rubber, but are made entirely of rubber. And what that allows us to do are some of the Olympic lifting mo movements where we actually have to pick the barbell up and then we can drop it safely and the weights will just bounce. They won't tear up the concrete, they won't tear up anything, um, they'll just bounce off the ground. So. That's the type of weight that we prefer are the Olympic bumpers. They allow us to do a tremendous amount of exercises uh, where we're going to drop the weight. And of course, weight is weight. So whether it's rubber or steel, if we're going to do a bench press or anything else that's going to stay on the rack, the rubber is just as good as the steel. So I prefer the rubber weights. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of exercises, the thruster and the push press, two basic exercises that haven't changed. They're as old as fitness, but they are incredibly effective. You can go to my website and find out other exercises that you can do. There's an infinite number, anything that you can think of. Find out workouts that you can do, ways that you can incorporate these exercises into your own routine and improve your fitness right now. I get back to the RRL only to see chalk marks on the ground that Jimmy, Allen, Patrick, and Will had already finished one or two rounds ahead of me. So I know I have a tremendous amount of time to make up and I better do it quickly. Oh, I'm catching up. But as soon as I grab that pull up bar with the 20 pound vest, I know that I'm in for a very, very tough workout. The, the thing that you have to think about in a workout like Murph is that there's so much work, so much volume in this workout that if you start on the first or second round, get it, if you start getting tired on the first or second round and you, you feel like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete this workout. Those are the things that happen in your head. Those are the mental games that you have to play with yourself because your body's telling you to stop. Your brain's telling you to stop. 
but you have to push through. Yeah. And then we stop. As the workout continued and I got deeper and deeper into the heart of Murph, I started marking my, my I started thinking about things that made the workout just a little bit easier. I would do my pull-ups and then I would do my push-ups. I'd reach over for the chalk and I would mark it at that point so that after I finished my squats, I wouldn't have to reach down again and, and mark it. And I'll tell you what, you know you're in a hard workout when you start thinking that way. As you start to get better, you're paying more and more attention to your diet, you're working out harder than ever, and you're seeing results. One thing to think about is to always have a great snack with you, a good snack that's going to give you calories from carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And here's a really, really simple way to do it. I always have some boiled eggs in the refrigerator ready to go. A boiled egg is a great source of protein, low fat, it's an excellent source of protein. I highly suggest that you have some boiled eggs available at all times. Then I'm always going to have a, a bowl full of fresh fruit. I've got mangoes, apples, bananas here, whatever's in season, it doesn't matter. You can have oranges, citrus, whatever. And then these are going to be my, my calories from carbohydrates. And then I'm going to make sure that I always have some fat in my snack. And I've got almonds, walnuts, and pecans, depending on the day, I'll pick whichever one I want. It doesn't really matter. Throw an egg, an apple, and some nuts in a bag. You've got an excellent snack. Now, if you don't have time for that, or you would rather rather go with something that is uh, is already made for you, here's something that's on the market. I love this product. It's called Paleo Kits. It's beef jerky, nuts, and some dried strawberries, and it gives you um, a good ratio of carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Um, also, this helps kids. Steve is donating his, uh, the profits go directly to Steve's Club, which is a nonprofit um, focused on enhancing the lives of disadvantaged youth through training, coaching, and community development. So Steve's Club actually does a great job. This is a great snack, or you can make your own. But think about it. You probably have around your house what you, the makings for a great snack. Have a good snack with you. You're going to find that it makes your metabolism race by keeping steady calories coming to you throughout the day. Eat smaller meals, more snacks. Try that for a couple weeks and see how you feel. I definitely noticed a difference with Progenix. The biggest thing I noticed was one, I wasn't quite as sore the next day, and I just felt more fresh for the next workout. And it just makes your workout, your next workout, more productive because you're not just running through mud, but uh, actually doing what your body can do. I'm Chris Spieler, and I am Progenix. You're not in this alone. Like Fitness Truth on Facebook to see the workout we do every day and post your scores and videos. You can watch episodes, access hundreds of workouts, and see progress from fans just like you. And what I'm trying to do when I'm doing this workout is maintain form throughout. And when I say that, what I mean is that I don't want to cheat the, cheat the motion and I don't want to cheat the people around me. I want to do this workout as prescribed, going to the full depth in my squat where my hip gets below my knee, my back's straight, and I'm coming up to full extension. On my push-ups, I want to hear that vest hit the ground and I want to come up and lock my arms out in full extension. Um, and on the pull-up, I want to make sure that I am completely extended on the bottom 
and I want to come up and put my chin fully over the top of the bar at the top. That is the range of motion that we're after. And of course, as we see, you know, the volume increase and the intensity increase, a lot of times you see the form fall off. And I had to get onto a couple of guys about their form. All the way up, Jim. All the way up. <laughs> So as I start to get to round 11, 12, I'm looking at, at the guys around me, and as I hit le round 12, I see Jimmy Levine just very carefully and quietly, without any fanfare, slip off into the dark. I'm also hearing Alan Lebovitz, Patrick St. Charles, and others say that they have one more round, or they're on the 14th round, and I'm thinking, man, I'm on the 12th round, I've got three more rounds, it's everything I can do to get through these rounds. Again, I quit thinking about the rounds as much as possible and just thought about the next exercise. Just get that chin over the bar one more time. Two more rounds. So after four or five people leave, I know that with this weighted vest, there's, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna catch them, I'm gonna lose my $20, but I'm gonna beat the rest of these guys that are here. That's what I'm determined to do. And I take off after my last, after my last squat, I start to leave the driveway and my legs are so fried that I can't even begin to run until I get down the driveway a significant portion. There's nothing in the legs. I then start a, a, a very slow and sloppy jog with Gus, and Gus is excited. He's pulling along. He wants me to go up that hill and catch these guys. But I tell you, I just didn't have it in the legs today after all those squats. We just did 300 squats. It's an incredible amount of, of, of workout, plus we've already run a mile. So a mile and 300 squats will make your legs feel like a bunch of spaghetti noodles. And as I move up through the hill, here comes a, a dark figure, and I'm waiting to see who it is. Who do you think it is? Jimmy Levine. You know? I beat Tom. Of course, he had a 20 pound weight vest on. I may not have beat Jimmy Levine, I may not have beat Alan Levovitz or Will Kelly or even Patrick St. Charles today, but I was able to beat my benchmark on the board and that's what this is all about. It's not all about beating another person. It's about getting the results and beating yourself or your previous times because what does that mean? That is better improved work capacity. I was able to do the exact same amount of work, in fact, more work today, because we're going up the hill for the first time. I was able to do the exact same or more work in exactly the same time, which makes me feel good. I know that I've gotten in better shape because my work capacity has improved and I can see it clearly. It's repeatable and measurable. And that's what we're trying to do here at the RL. We're trying to get in better shape and prove it to ourselves and the people around us.